Some medical schools are known to be competitive within the year group. Is this what any medical school is like? No, I actually think that's one of the best things about being in medical school. We're a small, small cohort, so um, we know each other and we care about each other. Um, and naturally, we're all competitive with ourselves and we want to try and do the best we can. But because it's a pass-fail system and there's no minimum number of fails for a year, it's in everyone's best interest to pass and to try and get everyone else to pass as well. So I was actually really surprised and pleasantly surprised at how collaborative everyone is and how much people genuinely want to make everyone pass throughout the year. What are the different entry options into the AU Medical School? Well, there's a few. Like, um, I came through sort of an undergraduate degree and then kind of sat the GAMSAT and that's the way a lot of people will traditionally come into the med school. Um, and so you kind of you get your GPA result from your undergraduate degree and you combine that with your GAMSAT and then from there you get offered um, interviews at different universities. And so I got an offer um, to come and study at the ANU after you finish your interviews and, and you get selected. But um, I don't think that's how you got through, is it? No, so I came through an unconventional pathway. So I did my undergrad at ANU um, and I did the PhD, the PhD and CHD pathway. Um, so that's the Bachelor of Philosophy and Science with an honours year. So it's a four year undergraduate degree. Um, which includes that on the at the end and you get a lot of academic freedom, you get to sort of pick all the subjects that you want to do as an undergrad and then finish that on year and you do your interview but you don't see the GAMSAT mm -hmm. and you come it that way. Yeah, that's not the only other way is it? No, so there's also the Bachelor of Health Science and the first cohort of undergrads started in 2018. So that's another pathway with undergrad at the ANU, that's a three year undergraduate degree that you do. And then you don't sit against that, but you do your interview and the normal application process, and then you get it that way. Alright, there's a few ways, yeah. Will I be disadvantaged if I haven't studied science since high school? No, not at all, I don't think. I think you need enough to get through the GAMSAT, but I did an arts degree, my major was in Arabic, I also studied French, and there are plenty more. Um, in our year who have done different things like finance, languages, politics. Yep, I'm the same. I come from an arts background. Haven't done any maths or science since year 10. I uh, had to do a lot of catching up, so I had to do a lot of study on my own uh, to make up uh, the ground that I'd lost. Um, but it was hard work, but it's definitely doable. Definitely doable. And once you get you know, halfway through first year, you're pretty much on the same as everyone else. I mean, obviously, they will have so people who have had science degrees will have you know a level of detail of knowledge that you won't have, but you will, you can definitely catch up enough to get through. And they do teach you from the beginning. They do. They do. They assume that you don't have any science background. So, and I'd say that you do actually have an advantage. You know, it means that you can think more laterally through different problems and and not get too complacent. <laughs> and the skills that you learn from your different non-science background will come in useful um, in medicine um, and in fact some of those skills, particularly with arts backgrounds, those skills are not really formally taught in med school and you will come in having those, so that puts you at an advantage in some ways. Is it possible to have a life outside of med school? Yeah, of course. Um, the great thing about the ANU Medical School is that it has it's a small cohort, so everyone gets to know each other. It's very easy to organize uh, sports. It is a basketball group where we play on a regular basis with uh, students from all the years. And um, it's easy to hang out, have a few drinks, relax, and kind of take a break from it from as well. Because mm. it's like, I'd say there's 100 people in our year, and I know sort of everyone in our year. And some people from Canberra, some people did undergrad here, some people moved over from um, interstate. And so already you can start to like meet everyone in your year. And you're doing a lot of classes with them, especially in the first two years. So you get to know each other, you go for coffees, you go for drinks, you play sport, you get to know people in the years above and below, as you said. And then you kind of, you, you spread out your network and start meeting people from Canberra outside of those networks because friends are friends. And so I feel like because Canberra is a bit of a, kind of a uni town almost, you start to really get to know a lot of people from like, Almost all the little spots around Yeah, here. you know everyone by their first name and a little mm. bit about them as well. Mm. Can you keep a job during medical school? Um, so myself, I think you included, and a bunch of other students at the med school um, have all worked throughout their clinical years and their pre-clinical years. Um, phase one, so your first two years, is a little bit easier to have a job because the schedule's a bit more flexible. 
However, in third and fourth year, definitely still possible, but you just kind of got to work around your program. Mm. Yeah, and I agree with that because um, so like I was working at QuestCon, and that was perfect because um, you could have those flexible hours of work where you're working on the weekends, but you're also working at night, and you kind of you can't have the job, but you just you do need a bit of flexibility because the schedule can be a bit inconsistent. But I think a lot of people in our, in our year had those sorts of jobs and managed to, to fit those in and still fit that in around the good life balance too. Does AMU Medical School have any clubs or societies to get involved with? Uh, yeah, they do. Um, most of them run under the umbrella of the ANU MSS or the Medical Student Society. So there's quite a few societies under that umbrella. Um, one of them is the Australian Rural Medical Society or ARMS. Um, they run quite a few events throughout the year, including um, a trip out to a rural pub. Um, they run school visits and that sort of stuff. Um, there's also Close the Gap. Yeah, Close the Gap, which is quite a key one as well. Um, there's also certain specialties that have their own group, like there's the Surgical Society, the Constitutory Workshops, that sort of stuff. There's the GPSM, which is a GP branch, um, there's Doctors for the Environment. Um, there's also a lot of other events that are run by the ANU MSS itself. What else do we have? We also have one review? Yeah, there's the Med Review, which is a sort of med, uh, musical, um, comedy musical run by the Med School. Really entertaining and really fun. Yeah. Is all of the coursework undertaken on the main ANU campus at Acton? Uh, yeah, the vast majority um, is on the Acton campus. So four days a week um, we're here, we've got our lunch room here, um, the labs downstairs and the tutorial rooms are um, upstairs. And then just across the road we've got the um, lecture theatre as well. We spend a lot of our time as well. And then one day a week, um, be it in first or second year, um, you're stationed either at the Camp Hospital or Calvary Hospital, um, so that's a bit of a drive away. And then in third and fourth years of phase two, you um, spend all of your time in the clinical setting, so you're either at Camp Hospital or Calvary, or if you're in rural stream, you spend time in a rural hospital. Um, so there's no time at Acton for phase two, but um, <coughs> you do still do um, tutorials and you still do lectures, but in the clinical setting. A typical clinical day for a first year is usually on a Thursday. Um, it's taking place on NTCH, uh, so the Canberra Teaching Hospital, which is about a 15 minute drive from campus. Um, usually it starts around 9 and we'll start with a couple of lectures. Um, and then you take a break between 12 to 1, and then in the afternoon you have a few tutorials. And then you start by learning how to take a history of patients, and then you move on to uh, learning how to perform clinical exams. And then uh, once the semester, you also get to um, do bedside teaching, which is where you get to follow around a junior doctor or a consultant around the hospital and interview um, real life patients as opposed to simulated patients that we often get in um, clinical groups. Um, so this is really great because you get to you know map out their whole story and often take a history or practice clinical examinations on them, like the over the heart. What does a normal week look like in the clinical years? Yeah, so um, year three, year four is probably quite similar. I was here uh, in Canberra for both years. And usually uh, you start off with morning ward rounds and always time for a coffee break after that. Um, then you move on to going to clinics or surgical theatres, practicing your uh, physical examinations and clinical skills. And then you know, there's always uh, organized teaching in the after, whether that be by the consultant, the registrars, or uh, presenting cases to senior doctors and learning from them. Um, and then to finish off the day, usually we have some personal studies and then ample amount of time to continue on doing the things that you enjoy, such as exercising or, or even cooking. Um, you were long-term rural. Yes. How was that? So I went to, uh, to be here in my third year and was able to return in fourth year for anesthetics. Um, I found that it was quite similar to um, urban students for our day-to-day -day activities, um, starting early um, and spending the day um, doing what you gone over, um, but also we did have one day of teaching a week, both, oh, yes. well, a whole year, um, and that's for um, both years we do, I'm dedicated to that. What core clinical placements are undertaken in third and fourth year? So in third year, the year split into two parts, so you've got your community medicine and you've also got your hospital-based medicine. 
So in your community medicine, you'll do three rotations. So you'll do a GP rotation, you'll do a paediatric rotation, and you'll also do a rural GP rotation. For that one as well, you can also go up to the NT um, if you apply. And with respect to the medicine or hospital component, so for that one, you've got medicine and surgery. You'll do two rotations in medicine, and you'll do three rotations, sometimes four in the surgical one. And in fourth year, usually it comprises of a four blocks. Uh, one is acute care, which is uh, made up of ED, ICU, and anesthetics. The second one is usually psychiatry. The third is obstetrics and gynecology, focusing on women's health and neonatology. And the fourth one is a senior version of medicine and surgery, where you have specialties um, in those areas, such as cardiothoracics or neurology. Uh, most of the time, our placements were separated over Canberra Hospital and Calgary Hospital, but sometimes there's other places you can go as well. Yep, so in your fourth year, you can do some of your rotations for short blocks in rural hospitals as well. How many students are allocated the same clinical rotation? So, in rural, there's usually between one or two uh, students in each team. This ranges from GP, where you'll be one student in a practice and you'll be rotating between different GPs there. You'll also do rotations through surgery and medicine where you'll either be helping out the team, functioning as a pseudo intern, or you'll be helping out in the theatre. How about Canberra? Yeah, so Canberra's kind of similar. It depends where your place it is. So in GP practice it's usually one-on-one and do you over the GP or of the GPs within the practice. And then in the hospital it varies by discipline. Um, there could be up to about four students with each placement, but they're usually the bigger team. So you get divided amongst the team and you'll be one-on-one -on -one with the cons uh, consultant or the registrar usually. Um, so even if there's a lot of students on a placement, you still get to move around, so it's pretty good. Can I do my third year at a rural hospital? Yes, you can. So in third year, you can opt in um, to do a whole year in one of six rural towns split into northern and southern nodes. Um, I went to Bega, which is a larger node, has around seven students, um, and the other two southern node towns is Yurubadala, which has about five students, and Kuma, which usually has around three students. Um, you went to an, uh, one of the northern node towns, didn't you? Yeah, so I was based in Young for my third year, which is a small town um, in, West, in Western New South Wales, and it's quite a small node, there's only two students, so you, you're quite um, hands-on with the GPs as well as the doctors at the hospital and they know you quite well. And another note is Cowra, which is in the northern note. It's only an hour from Young, so we do a lot of teaching with them because there are only two students there as well. To round out the northern nodes, you've also got Golden, which has eight students. And then occasionally, I think it's four times a year, yeah. you meet to do a teaching block where uh, the northern node meets in Golden and the southern node meets in Bigger. And you do a week of teaching, so this could be uh, learning skills, this could be having pathologists come to show you specimens um, and other clinical teaching.